Hey you guys, I wanted to show you an interesting method to clean things with electricity. So I've got four very clean microscope slides here, but this is what they looked like before the cleaning process. The top slide has a thin layer of photoresist on it. The next slide down has a thin layer of oil that I applied just by smearing it on. The next slide down has a sharpie mark on it, a permanent marker, and I also left a big fingerprint on it. And I also prepared a slide with a really small amount of paper super glued to it. The paper is just a Kim wipe. One of the tests that's often used to check if a surface is really clean is called the water break test. And surfaces that have very, very little or no contamination on them will be very hydrophilic. So if you put water on it, it will spread out and not bead up. Surfaces that are contaminated with oils or wax or something like that will um, have a tendency to make the water beat up. So in this case, on the, even on the part that's supposedly clean, if I uh, put a water drop on it, uh, it, it doesn't spread out quite so easily. Whereas on the clean slide, I can spread this water out and it has no tendency to beat up. I can actually make a really thin sheet of water, which is pretty cool like that. I started the cleaning process by loading the dirty slides into a vacuum chamber and using just a mechanical pump lowered the pressure to about 100 millitor. The bell jar is wrapped with a, about four turns of copper tubing and the tubing is connected to an RF transmitter and matching network. So basically this is just a radio transmitter that's broadcasting all of the time at about 13.56 megahertz and the tuner just allows all that RF energy to go into the coil as opposed to being reflected back into the transmitter. It's pretty easy to ignite the plasma with the RF energy so even at just 5 watts of RF power it's uh, possible to get the air plasma ignited. The rapidly changing magnetic field created by the coil induces currents in the plasma through uh, you know, induction and so essentially what we have here is a transformer where the primary winding is the big copper coil on the outside and the secondary is the plasma itself. We can also change the effective cleaning power of the plasma by using a gas other than air. So one very effective gas is just pure oxygen and creating a plasma out of pure oxygen creates all sorts of different ways that the cleaning can happen. The plasma itself is a mixture of all kinds of different things. It contains ions, it contains photons of both very short ultraviolet and also visible uh, spectra. It contains free radicals, it contains uh, energetic atoms, it contains ozone, all kinds of different things. And all of these different particles uh, help clean the surface. So for example, very short wave ultraviolet light that normally couldn't even pass through air will pass through the rarefied environment in the vacuum chamber. And so that really short wave ultraviolet will break hydrocarbon bonds. The plasma can also oxidize things just by reacting the oxygen with it. So it's almost like burning something without a flame because we're introducing energy into the system to cause hydrocarbons to become oxidized. In addition to all the chemical processes that happen, the cleaning is also somewhat physical. So the oxygen molecules, and if we were using air, uh, nitrogen molecules could also just help blast the dirt off of the surface. It works sort of like a little tiny sandblaster, and the high energy molecules strike the surface and just blow the dirt physically off of it. This process is especially effective against organic compounds because the things that are containing carbon can be combined with the reactive oxygen species in there, and the result will be uh, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, and those are gases that can be pumped away by the vacuum pump. So essentially what we're doing here is converting all of the solid and liquid contaminants on the surface to gases, and then those gases can be easily pumped away. As you can see, the process is quite effective. There's a small amount of photoresist left on this slide. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a tiny amount, but it's, it's noticeable. Uh, the way I had these slides leaned up against a metallic structure inside the vacuum pump I think caused the plasma to have uh, some uh, weak points or something. And so most of this slide is clean, but there's a little bit of residue left here. The paper has been transformed in an interesting way. 
it's still more or less intact, although uh, you can see that it's been reduced in mass and it's not really useful as a, um, as a paper towel anymore. The process is known as ashing, where all of the combustible things have been removed from this and all that's left are the inorganic compounds. Uh, this, this piece of paper isn't fully ashed either. I think it, the whole process would take, you know, overnight or a day or something like that. This cleaning process is used extensively in the semiconductor industry because it's so effective. Generally, you would start by cleaning your things with a mechanical method, like applying a solvent like acetone and either rubbing the surface or putting it in an ultrasonic cleaner. But the problem is, what if your acetone has half a percent of impurities in it? When you take the slide out of that bath and the acetone evaporates, it might leave that half a percent of, of contaminants on the surface. So after removing the bulk of the dirt with, with uh, the solvent, the surface of the wafer or the slide or whatever can be loaded into the plasma chamber, and then it gets pretty much atomically clean. I mean, the, the plasma chamber has the ability to remove pretty much everything. And if the power levels are high enough, it can actually remove the substrate itself. So, you know, I mentioned it works sort of like a mini sandblaster. If the energy levels are high enough, uh, it can actually cause damage to the surface of the thing that we're cleaning. Okay, see you next time. Bye.